What's up you guys, it's Hannah. Welcome back to my channel. I made it really difficult for myself today because I didn't put my contacts in this morning because I didn't think it would be a problem, but... Like, that just looks awful, so I'm gonna have to roll with this blind. Literally blind, um, but it's fine. Anyway, in today's video, I am going to be showing you guys how I edit my YouTube videos. This video was so requested. I've actually gotten a lot of DMs, a lot of comments, just a lot of questions about how I edit. So, I am going to show you guys the basics, pretty much, of how I edit my videos today. I really wanted to give you guys the full editing experience and I'll let you guys see what it's like to be me and to edit. So, this is typically what I look like, minus the makeup of course, but I had to do that part. I'm in a little corner of my room, which I kind of call my office. This is the desk that I sit at to edit my videos. So, welcome to the real side of YouTube, editing. The first step of editing for me really is purchasing a nice coffee, because if I don't have a nice coffee, I would probably collapse doing this and I just wouldn't be able to like do any of it. So this is what really keeps me in the game. Yeah, first step already done. We have the iced coffee, thank God. The second step, wow, I'm really just jumping into this. I love that for me. So this is my setup for when I edit. I like having a candle burning because I love candles and they just make me feel peaceful and calm. The first thing that I do obviously when I edit is just import all of my footage onto my computer. The editing software that I use is Final Cut Pro. I get that question a lot too. If you guys don't know what that is, it is basically Apple's professional editing software. I used to use iMovie. I used Windows Movie Maker when I was like 10 and I've tried Adobe Premiere Pro. I don't like Premiere Pro. It's just too complicated for me, I feel like, but I really, really like Final Cut and I've gotten so used to it that I feel like I couldn't edit with anything else ever again. It is $300 from Apple, which is pricey, but I think it's definitely worth the investment because there's so much that you can do with Final Cut and that's really what I've discovered over the past almost year of having Final Cut. So I import my footage into Final Cut and then I just drag all the clips into my timeline to start working. And the first thing I do, which is the most boring part of editing is the rough cut. So basically that just means I go through all of the footage that I have for that video and cut it down to basically just the footage that I want to keep. So the rough cut is probably the most crucial part because you cut out everything you don't want. That's really what you need to do first because then you have the content that you want to work with that you can put your fun creative touches on and that's the fun part of editing. So the second step is basically everything else. Well that's not true. I do have like the finishing touches at the end which is where I add most of my background music I feel like and I also color grade and then that is a question that I get all the time. What filter do I use on my video? Guys, spoiler alert, I'm gonna tell you in this video how I do that. So keep watching, this is real. I just got so excited because I feel like that's something that you guys have wanted to know forever. I'm gonna split this into two parts, I think, for the creative section. So the first section, I just wanna talk about the effects and the tools and stuff in Final Cut that I use most. So like titles, sound effects, video effects, stuff like that. And then I can get into the part where it's like more personalized and customized by me. I'm just gonna put everything on the screen for you guys so you can see what I'm saying to you visually. The titles that I use the most are Arial Bold Italic and Helvetica, just the regular one. Honestly, my use of titles changes based on the video. I like to try out new ones for different videos just to see if they fit the vibe but those are the two that I use the most and then another thing that I do is tracking so when you are putting a title in you can use this tool called tracking and basically it makes it go from this to this the whole point of it is to spread out the letters so I just think that looks cooler personally a few of the other things that I use off the top of my head let's go with sound effects next I like mystery accents I don't remember which number it is but I'll obviously have it written on the screen so bottle cork the title typewriter, auto open door one and auto close door two are what I use for my intros. Yeah, so those are the things that I use for that. I also use the crop tool and Ken Burns a lot. I just forgot to mention them while I was filming this video. And then my default transition is the slide transition. Obviously, you guys have seen that if you watch my videos and I speed it up to make it the shortest amount of time that it can be, which I think is like point 
3, the sound effect that I put over that, I download and I'll get to that in a second. And then the video effects, I use Bad TV, Fish Eye. I use the camcorder effect sometimes, Sensor. I'll sometimes use the simple border. I feel like a lot of them that I use are in the stylized tab on Final Cut. And then anything that I do for like funny edits, I'll use the distortion stuff. I sometimes use heat. I use underwater a lot actually on like clips and titles. And then for the sound video effects, audio effects. I'm so dumb. I use the muffled effect for background music sometimes. If I want my voice to make my voice deeper, I use the monster effect. And if I want to make my voice higher, I use the cartoon animals effect. And I feel like that is like, those are the three that I use the most. My default title, the one that I always use is just the basic title. Sometimes I use the typewriter title as well if I want to have my text look like this. And this is where I want to talk about one of the most useful things that I learned for editing. I learned this from Ashley Best Dress, from her How I Edit video and this tip changed my life. If you guys don't know about this, I want to pass it on to you guys because it literally has changed my editing and it honestly makes editing so much faster and easier. Basically, you can customize your keyboard in Final Cut and you can like make each key whatever command that you want. So say for example, let me put my glasses on for this so I can look at my keyboard and see what I'm doing. For this part, you have to make some certain things default. In order to make something default, I'm just going to show you real quick. Just go to, for example, titles, go to the title section, go to the basic title or for whatever one you want to do. For me, it's basic title and then you control click. There's an option that says make default title and that's literally how you do it. Same goes for transitions. If you go into the transitions tab, for me personally, it is the slide transition, control click and make default. So that is the first step that you need to do if you want to do this. So if I'm at this point in my video and I want to put in a title, instead of dragging the title in, I can just click Y. That's the key that I assigned it to and there's a the basic title right there. So basically in order to assign keys to be specific commands, you go up to the top of your screen where it says Final Cut Pro, you go to commands and then you go to customize and then it shows you the whole keyboard. On the left side, there is something that says command list and then there's command groups. So you can go in and all of the commands in Final Cut are in there. So say for example, you want to assign solo animation. You literally just click it and drag it and then you just drop it on whatever key that you want it to and then it'll end up saying on that key, it'll say no modifier solo animation. This is just an example. And basically the modifier thing, no modifier means you can just click whatever key it is and it shows up. If it has a modifier, say for example, it's command, then you have to hit command and then that key and then it shows up. But then it ends up just being that you have to remember so many combinations and that is just time consuming and no one has time for that. If you drag it to whatever key on your keyboard that you want it, it will put it at the very top, no modifier, and you can just click that key on your keyboard and there it is. You're f welcome for that. So that really changed the game for me. So then moving on to like the creative portion of this creative edits segment, I feel like if I talked about every single edit that I did, this video would be very long, but I kind of want to talk about how I download, glass are going back on, how I download video files, audio files to find everything that I want to download. I just go to YouTube and then in the search bar, if I want it to be a specific sound effect, say for example, you want this sound effect, I go into YouTube and I just type in ding sound effect. I try to describe the effect as best as possible. And then if I want to download it, I go up to the top where the URL is. I control C to copy it. And then this is the website that I use to download MP3 files. So just the audio, not the video. And then basically it'll just download that audio file to your iTunes. So it'll already show up in Final Cut and then you can go in and insert it. And then I started talking about this transition that I made. So I explained how I found and downloaded the video clip for that. And basically to find that, you probably already guessed, but I just went to YouTube. I typed in, I don't even remember. It was something about VHS effect or something and basically found this clip. And then to download that, I go to this website. It's called Online Video Converter. And this is the one that I like to use for MP4. So anything video related, all the links that I'm talking about will be in the description as well if you guys wanna use those websites. So then the next thing I wanna talk about is my music and where I get my music from. Same thing, I just go to YouTube and I type in no copyright and then it'll say like music, sounds, background music. A lot of the time I just hit background music and then you can scroll through and there's so many channels that are just for no copyright music. Some of my favorite no copyright songs. I'm about to play a nice montage of them for you and I'll have the artists and the name of the song on the screen.
So those are some of my favorite no copyright songs and artists. I find a lot of my music that I like from other creators as well. And then I also just search through the no copyright YouTube search results and find some that way. That leads me to the final thing that I wanted to talk about. I'm gonna put my glasses on for this one because this is a freaking doozy. You guys are not ready for this. I am going to show you guys how I color grade my videos. Pretty much how I even started this is I started realizing that people were putting like filters or whatever on their videos or at least it looked like filters and they just looked so cool and I was like what the are these i later found out they're called luts luts i don't know how you're supposed to verbally say that but this is what they're called and you can buy them like i found this out after i had already created my own so i mean i guess that's good because i didn't pay for the one that i used i just made it using effects from final cut i literally searched on youtube how to color grade and that is how i found the video that i used that was the most helpful video on the face of the earth if you want an in-depth tutorial of how I basically learned how to do this. I'm gonna put this guy's video in the description bar. His name is Daniel. This video was so freaking helpful and then also in his description and in his video he talks about his adjustment layers that he has so you can go on. There's a link in his video description box to download the adjustment layers and then he explains what those are for and there's also a link right under that to show you how to install them because I know I had a little bit of issue installing them. I don't use the base correction layer. This will make sense if you watch his video Video because he talks about two adjustment layers base correction and look grade I don't use the base correction one that's basically if you want to go in and adjust you know the brightness saturation highlights shadows any of that basically what I did I downloaded his adjustment layers they are free you can make a donation if you want to this guy is awesome so I honestly should have made a donation but I downloaded them and they are in my titles section of Final Cut and then I use the one called look grade they honestly both do the exact same thing like they're blank just as they are and you're the one that puts in the color wheel to make the effect so so this is the point in the video where i'm gonna turn off my color grading that i've had on this entire video so that i can accurately show you what i'm doing this is what my video looks like with it on and this is what it looks like off the type of color grading that i use is orange and teal so basically let's get freaking started and i'll try and give you guys a very compact explanation of how i did this to do this i dragged look grade layer onto my video and then in the effects tab on Final Cut, you go to color and then at the very top left, it's the first one, it's called color board. I just dragged that to the look grade layer thing. So on the top right next to your video, you will see color board show up and then it basically just looks like a rainbow and I had no idea what to do with this when I first saw it. First of all, let me just say that saturation and exposure, I don't mess with. Personally, for my color grading, you can do that if you want to. So the saturation and exposure tabs, I don't touch, but the color tab is really where you do the work. So there are these circles in the middle of this rainbow looking screen. So if I would drag, this one right here is the master, and basically that just changes everything, the shadows, midtones, and highlights of the thing. So like, say I took the master and I dragged it into green. The whole thing is green. Like, it all just looks green and then this darker one is the shadows and then midtones i don't really exactly know what midtones are but like this one is the midtones tab it's like the grayish one the white one is the highlights one for the orange and teal color grading which is the model that i follow you want the midtones in the orange and you want shadows in the teal and then you kind of adjust the highlights and the overall master to make the picture look the way you want it to i don't like to click and drag these because it can get really messy really fast so we're gonna go down into midtones and this degree is how it's gonna move it along the line we're gonna want to drag that into the orange area and then in order to introduce orange into your picture you want to use the percentage thing you want to drag it upwards and that as you see on the color board it will start making it more orange. And then for the shadows, we want that to be in the teal section, which it already kind of is. And then you introduce that into your picture as well. Obviously you can see it's really freaking green. So that is where the master is gonna come in. As you can see on the color board, the master is right in the middle of the green. So if you want it to be less green, you take the percentage section tab and you drag it down and that takes the green out of the picture. Now it's like a little too pink for my liking. So that is where you go into the highlights section and the highlights right now is kind of positioned in the blue, but you want it to be in the pink. Once it's in the pinks, I'm gonna go to the percentage thing and I'm gonna drag it down a little bit to take that pink out. It's just a little bit, just very slight. And then honestly, I can go fix it if I want to. So I can go back and just keep messing with it to get what I want. 
want, the look that I want. But say that I like this and I like how this looks. This is what the clip looks like without the color grade. And this is what it looks like with the color grade. So without, with, without, with. If this is what I like, I'm gonna go to save effects preset right here. And then once you click that, it has all of the effects that you've made and all the changes that you've made saved. So I'm just gonna hit save. And then let's see if it worked. I'm gonna go back up to the look grade. I'm gonna drag it in again. And as you can see, like the look grade layer, it doesn't do anything unless it has a color wheel on it. But if I want to put in the color grading that I just did, I'm gonna go to my effects tab and I saved it under 360. So I'm gonna go to 360. I saved it as color grading four. So it's right here. I'm gonna drag it onto the look grade. And there you go. That's it. That's really, I'm gonna take this off. That's really all I have for this video. I feel like that's the best comprehensive guide to my editing that I could give you. If you guys have more specific questions about like specific edits that I do, leave your questions down below. I'll make a part two of this video if you guys want me to, but I feel like that was really a comprehensive guide to how I edit. And now I need to go back and film every single thing I just talked about to you guys because I didn't film any of that because obviously I'm filming myself. I really should have thought that through. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope this was helpful for you guys and answer some of your questions. Like I said, if you have any more questions or specific questions, leave them in the description. <laughs> I've been talking for too long. Leave them down below in the comments. Um, if you guys have stayed until this point of the video, comment down below. I'm a real one because you are a real one. If you guys like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you guys want to see more videos from me, make sure you hit the subscribe button. And I hope you guys all have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you guys in my next video.